Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. In early 1861, citizen soldiers at Camp Yates in Springfield, Illinois, might have recalled an adolescent boy badgering officers to join the army. He was 15 years old and desperately wanted to serve in a cavalry regiment, but recruiters dismissed him as being undersized and underage. One man joked that he was too light to make a cavalry charge, probably got a lot of guffaws out of his friends. Still, the boy refused to take no for an answer, and so whenever a new regiment arrived in camp, he'd seek out the officers in charge and plead his case to enlist. There were no takers. The months ticked by. April, May, June, without success. By early July, the youngster had run out of options and become desperate. The conventional wisdom on both sides believed the war was going to be brief, and he didn't want to miss his chance. On July 3rd, 1861, he found another officer, this time an infantry officer, a colonel, and he begged him to take him on as a servant. He, of course, would not be a soldier, but at least he'd be able to travel with the regiment and maybe, just maybe, find an opportunity to join the ranks before the whole thing was over. The colonel, much to the boy's surprise, agreed on one condition that he have his parents' consent. The colonel also told him to act quickly as the regiment was just about to move out. The boy took off at top speed to get the needed permission. When he returned to camp just an hour later, he found the colonel and the regiment had left. They were gone. That colonel was named Ulysses S. Grant, and that regiment was the 21st Illinois Infantry, his first command during the war. The boy is pictured here, right here. His name is James William Bateman. Everyone called him Jimmy. His parents brought him into the world in 1846 in Springfield, the capital city of Illinois, where the boy had relocated from their native Kentucky. His father, Newton, labored as a cooper, a barrel maker and fixer, and his mother, Rebecca, kept house and cared for Jimmy's five siblings. By coincidence, Springfield happened to be home to another Newton Bateman. He hailed from New Jersey, served as an educator and superintendent of schools. He befriended Abraham Lincoln and raised three daughters, no relation to Newton Bateman, the father of Jimmy. When the war came, plucky little Jimmy's efforts to get into the Army were thwarted time and time again. Though Colonel Grant's invitation seemed like Jimmy's big chance, it is more than likely that the future lieutenant general of all the U.S. armies in the field had no intention of following through on having Jimmy become his servant. If Grant was aware that he left Jimmy with false hopes, he left no record of it, at least that I could find. When it came to Grant's own son, Fred, he famously indulged the boy by taking him to various camps and on campaign. Jimmy, little Jimmy, left behind no known record of how he felt about Grant stiffing him. However, Jimmy's subsequent actions suggest he was undeterred. The same month that Colonel Grant left with his new regiment, Jimmy journeyed to neighboring Christian County where, near the town of Taylorville, a group of patriotic young men formed an independent military company they named the Christian County Contingent. In a sketch of the company, Jimmy wrote, the idea was to get into the army. They were all thinking the same thing that Jimmy was. All these boys were like Jimmy. They were young folks for one reason or another, had trouble volunteering or maybe did not know how to go about it. Maybe their parents didn't want to give them permission. So they made their own way in. Here's what Jimmy wrote about how the group came together. Its rank and file were farmer boys just entering vigorous manhood. Few of them had seen their 25th year. 
They were filled with that patriotic spirit that caused them to willingly leave comfortable homes, loving parents and kind friends for the dangers of the battlefield, to march to the camp. They assembled for their departure to begin their life as soldiers of the Republic at Mason's Schoolhouse, nine miles west of Taylorville, on August 15, 1861. To make the day pleasant and memorable, a dinner in the Grove had been arranged for and provided by the friends of the departing would-be soldiers. After the dinner, much good-natured chatting of the boys as to the fitness for them being soldiers was indulged in by their friends. That was responded to in short, well-worded speeches by Henry H. Pope and William W. Mason. As the day drew to a close, the men took their places in the farm wagons that had been provided for their transportation to Springfield, Illinois. After the parting of the boys with those they held most dear, and alas for many of them, the final leave-taking, the wagon started on the journey amid the waving of flags and handkerchiefs and exclamations of, God keep you and return you to us again. Many looked for the last time upon loved faces whose lineaments would forever be with them in their new life to encourage them in well-doing. Many of those dear faces hovered in imagination over the sick and their distress and the smile that lit up the faces of the dying on the battlefield and the hospital by the roadside where they fell on their dreary marches told of its memory and the whispered name of that loved one was the last word uttered by the brave boy in blue who gave his life, his all, that his country might live. That's Jimmy's take and his description. The convoy of wagons filled with the sons of Illinois wound its way from Taylorville to Springfield. There, the Christian County contingent leaders secured a hall as headquarters and joined forces with a similar group from nearby Macoupin County. The consolidated company soon learned about a new regiment forming at Camp Butler nearby. The 33rd Illinois Infantry, nicknamed the Teacher's Regiment for the number of educators and students in the ranks. On August 16th, Jimmy and his comrades enlisted and 12 days later mustered into the Army into the 33rd as Company D. Jimmy became the company's drummer boy. In fact, he's pictured here wearing a veteran stripe, and I'm going to show you a close-up here, with a non-regulation patch of a drum. For those of you who are interested in material culture, that's the most unusual drummer boy insignia I've ever seen. Jimmy posed for this photograph, by the way, in the Springfield Gallery. So as the City Gallery on the south side of the public square. The owner was a Canadian-born photographer named Christopher Smith German. Life dates 1814 to 1896. He was quite prosperous as a photographer, owned several galleries in town. His clients included Abraham Lincoln. He took some early images of Abraham Lincoln. You've probably seen them before. Didn't know that Christopher Smith German was the photographer. The 33rd Infantry went on to spend its enlistment in the Western and Trans-Mississippi Theaters, participating in various expeditions and campaigns, including Vicksburg and the pivotal Union victory at Champion Hill in May 1863. They were also in actions along the Texas coast in 1864 and the siege and capture of Alabama's Spanish Fort and Fort Blakely. That's in April of 1865. Jimmy, the drummer boy, survived it all and mustered out with the survivors of the regiment on November 24th, 1865. A week later, on December 1st, the 33rd marched into Camp Butler four years and four months after they left to fight for freedom. One newspaper reported that, quote, the regiment is in fine condition and made a splendid appearance on parade, end quote. My hunch is that Jimmy posed for this photograph about that time, making him all of 19 years old in this image. 
He and the battle-hardened veterans of the 33rd received discharges a few days later in Chicago and melted back into society in peacetime America. Jimmy returned to his home and eventually settled in Clinton, Illinois, where he married and started a family to include five children of his own who lived to maturity. He supported them as a farmer and a laborer in Illinois and later in Independence, Kansas. Intensely proud of his service, the sketch he wrote about Company D was published in the 1902 regimental history titled History of the 33rd Regiment, Illinois Veteran Volunteer Infantry. One passage he included captured the spirit and sacrifice. Here's what he wrote. Company D, through its entire term of service, made good the promises pledged for its conduct on that August day at the old schoolhouse in Christian County. It was always ready to do its part in any undertaking and the little mounds by the roadside through the Southland from Illinois to the Mexican frontier attest the fact that they counted not the cost, but asked, where do you want us? And when told, did their best for country and home, end quote. Jimmy died in 1925 at the soldier's home in Leavenworth, Kansas. He was 79 years old. But thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.